this recording, we look at an example of setting out the steps for a one sample hypothesis test for the mean with a specific emphasis on the background to the test statistic and p-value of this hypothesis test. And in this example, we're told that IQ scores for the general adult population are known to be normally distributed with a mean mu equals 100 and a standard deviation sigma equals 15. And suppose we obtained a random sample of 25 university students and found that their mean IQ was 107.5. And the question we want to answer is, does this give us enough evidence to conclude university students have a higher mean IQ score than the general adult population? And in this test, we will assume that the population standard deviation for students' IQ scores is the same as for the general population of adults, and we will test at the 5% level of significance. Now, first thing is we can see this is a one sample test for the mean, and the population standard deviation sigma is known. So that means this would in fact be an example of a Z test. And the null hypothesis would be that there is no difference in the mean IQ of the student population and that of the general adult population. So H0 here would say that mu equals 100. While H1, since we're specifically looking at whether uni students have a higher mean IQ than the general adult population, H1 would say that indeed mu, the mean IQ of the student population, is greater than 100. We're testing at the 5% level of significance here, so the significance level alpha is 0.05. Now we said that we want to look a bit at the meaning of the test statistic and p-value here. And the basis of hypothesis testing is we start by assuming the null hypothesis is true. And then we look to see if our sample data gives us enough statistical evidence against H0 to allow us to reject it. That is, in this example, our reasoning would be to say if the true mean IQ of uni students was 100, as suggested by H0, what then would the resulting distribution of sample means look like for samples of 25 students, since that was our sample size? And the mean of the sample means in this sampling distribution would be the same as the hypothesised population mean of 100, the standard deviation of the sample means, that's the standard error of the mean, which is sigma divided by the square root of the sample size we are working with. So here that's 15 divided by the square root of 25, giving a standard error of 3. And because we were told that IQ is normally distributed, the distribution of sample means will also be a normal distribution. So this means that if H0 was true, our distribution of sample means would be centred at 100 and would be going up in steps of 3 for the standard error. So it would look like this. So the question then becomes, how does our actual sample mean fit in with this distribution of sample means? Our actual sample mean was 175 which is midway between 106 and 109 on that diagram. So 107.5 is going to be about there. So it looks like it's a fair way away from the centre of the distribution of sample means that we would have if H0 was true. And in looking at where this sample mean fits in, the test statistic actually tells us how many standard errors it is above or below the hypothesised mean of 100. And here, 107.5 is actually two and a half standard errors above 100. So therefore, the test statistic Z is in fact 2.5. That is, the test statistic Z is telling us how many standard errors from the hypothesised population mean our actual observed sample mean is. But the next question then is how unusual would it be to get a value that's at least 2.5 standard errors above the mean. And we know that 95% of values in a normal distribution 
are within two standard deviations of the mean or two standard errors of it if we're looking at a sampling distribution like this. So getting a value 2.5 standard errors from it does not seem a terribly common occurrence. But we could work out the actual probability of getting a sample mean at least 2.5 standard errors above the mean by looking, let's say, at a normal distribution table. And if you're not sure how to do that, you might want to view our StatsCasts on reading standard normal distribution tables. For now, we'll just take it for granted that you can work that out. And the probability, in fact, of getting a value in the normal distribution, at least 2.5 standard errors above the mean, it's actually a probability of 0 0.006, correct to three decimal places. So in the context of our example, that means that if the true mean IQ of students was only 100, as suggested by the null hypothesis, then we really would have drawn quite an unusual sample because only six in 1,000 sample means would be as high or higher than our observed value of 107.5. So that is what that is telling us. And more generally, the p-value always tells us this type of thing. Namely, it tells us how often we would expect to obtain a value of our test statistic as extreme or more extreme than the one we observed, if H0 was true. And this means that smaller p-values actually give greater evidence against H0, because the lower the probability value, the less it's suggesting our sample fits in with what we'd see if H0 was true. So we finally then compare our p-value with the significance level to decide whether in fact we have enough evidence to reject H0. So summarising what we found, in this case P was 0 0.006 and we tested at alpha equals 0.05. So here our P value is less than the significance level of 0.05. So we consider that we have enough evidence to reject H0. That is, we have enough evidence to be convinced that uni students really do have a higher average IQ than the general adult population and that the observed difference between our sample mean and the hypothesised population mean is more than we could just reasonably attribute to sampling variability. So in other words in this case if we just finish this off with a written conclusion we're concluding that the true mean IQ of university students is higher than that of the general adult population. So that is an example to demonstrate not just how we conduct the hypothesis test, but some of the background to the meaning of the test statistic and the p-value.